Well, historic weekend. Uh, this just happened to be actually on Saturday, November the 9th, the 25th anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. Actually, uh, that's when End Time Magazine was born. The reason being is because I had placed in my first book a message for the president that the Berlin Wall was coming down, the two Germanys would be reunited, and when that happened, that would be the catalyst that would throw us into the end time one world government. Well, that book was published in 86, in 89, November the 9th of 1989, the wall came down. The interesting thing is, within 20 days of the fall of the Berlin Wall, uh, President Herbert Walker Bush announced the birth of the New World Order. The New World Order from that time till this has been growing. We've adopted terms such as international law, international community, world community. Uh, New World Order is a term that's often used. The term globalization, which is the process of moving from the nation state structure of our world into a one world governmental structure. So uh, all that has happened since that time. The reason End Time Magazine was born is because I knew with the fall of the Berlin Wall, everything would speed up, throwing us into the end time. And I felt like there needed to be a publication that would keep people abreast, updated on the prophetic fulfillments because I knew that things were going to speed up. They were going to escalate. Now, what I want to do today is I want to read the passage that allow me to see, actually I started teaching in 1968 that the wall was coming down, uh, that the two Germanys would be reunited. Uh, and that of course was 21 years before the fact actually happened. So I wanna share with you today the scriptures that allowed me to see that. It's found in Revelation chapter number 13, verse one through three. And I wanna read all three verses because uh, I think you can't understand without uh, looking at all three of these verses. Starting with verse 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Verse 3, And I saw one of his heads as it were wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wondered after the beast. Now what I want to do today is to sort of take you down the path that God took me down uh, 25 years ago, uh, actually more than 25 years ago now, that God took me down to open my understanding as to what this passage means. A lot of people taught that the Antichrist was going to be killed and raised from the dead, and that's one of the ways we would know who the Antichrist was. However, as I studied this passage, I couldn't get that out of it. Uh, when you see this beast of Revelation 13. Now we know in the Bible a beast always symbolizes a kingdom or a nation. Uh, so uh, when you see this beast with the body of the leopard, the uh, feet of the bear, the mouth of the lion, the ten horns of the ten horn kingdom, what does this mean? Well, back in Daniel chapter number seven, several years before God had helped me understand the four beasts of Daniel chapter 7. Uh, there's a lion with eagle's wings, a bear, a leopard, and a ten-horned beast. And I realized that this beast of Revelation 13 was a combo beast made up of the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the ten horns because everything that was in Daniel 7 was repeated in Revelation 13, but in a different way. In Daniel 7, they're four separate beast. Now just to remind all of you in case you've not been through our Understanding the End Time series, the uh, first beast, the lion, God uses symbols that have significance at the time of the fulfillment. 
there's a major nation today whose recognized symbol is the lion. You look under lion in Webster's Third International Dictionary, it says the symbol of a country, Great Britain. Then, uh, also, if you go to London, you stand at Trafalgar Square in downtown London, there's a huge lion looking north, south, east, west. The lion is the recognized animal symbol of Great Britain. Then there's also a major nation today who symbols the bear. That, of course, is the Russian bear. Uh, it's been used on the front cover of Time magazine, the front cover of USA Today newspaper. It's used over and over again to represent Russia. The leopard was Germany uh, in the Webster's online dictionary under uh, Germany it says that the leopard uh, was the one of the symbols that Germany used finally the ten horn kingdom the Bible says that these ten horns represent ten kings that will join themselves together we won't take time to prove it today but that's the Holy Roman Empire reborn there's going to be a ten nation alliance which is not yet on the world scene but it will be soon and that ten nation alliance uh, represented the last power on the earth. Of these four nations, the Bible teaches that all these nations will be on the earth at the time of the second coming of Jesus Christ and at the time of the battle of Armageddon. So I had understood this previously. Now I'm wrestling with Revelation 13. What does all this mean? Now you don't have four separate nations. It says in, it says in uh, Daniel chapter 7, these beasts are four kingdoms that shall arise. So we know that these are kingdoms or nations. When you move to Revelation 13, you have one beast or one kingdom now. And if you read the context carefully, the Bible says that the Antichrist will have power over all the earth. So it's a depiction of a world government. So then I said, well, wait a minute. That means since this combo beast has the body of the leopard, that's Germany, the feet of the bear, that's Russia, the mouth of the lion, that's Great Britain. And oh, by the way, all seven heads from Daniel 7 are brought over to Revelation 13. And yet it specifically says that the uh, mouth of the beast will be the mouth of the lion. Why does it say that? Well, because when you try to put together a world government, one of the largest obstacles to overcome is the language barrier. So the Bible teaches us that the language of the end time world government will be English. Well, the United Nations has now declared that Britain or that England, English will be the authorized uh, language of the new world order, of the one world governmental system. Uh, English also is recognized as the language of the internet. So uh, even though there were seven heads, now this is the other thing that's really interesting. When you go from Daniel, there's one head of the lion, one head of the bear, four heads of the leopard, and one head of the ten horn uh, kingdom. Now what does this mean to us? Well, all seven heads are brought over, but only one of those heads actually represents the language of the end time one world government. The rest of the heads are all there. So on this combo beast, you've got one head of the lion, one head of the bear, four heads of the leopard, one head of the ten horn kingdom. You have a total of seven heads. How many heads are here on this beast? The Bible says the beast has seven heads and it also has the ten horns. So it's got the body of the leopard, the feet of the bear, uh, the ten horns, the ten horn kingdom, the mouth of the lion. So it's everything is joined together except for one element. The eagle's wings are gone. So hopefully that means the United States of America is not going to be an integral part of the kingdom of the Antichrist. Nevertheless, that's not relevant to what we're talking about today because the main thing we want to really focus on is, notice that it says, I'm going to read it again. And I saw one of his heads, one of his seven heads, as it were, wounded to death. So it doesn't say the Antichrist is going to be killed. It says that of the seven heads on this beast, one of the seven is going to be wounded. Let me just give it to you exactly the way it says it. And his were wounded to death, but his deadly wound 
was healed and all the world wondered after the beast. So then the question becomes of the seven heads, which one was wounded to death? So we got one head of the lion, one head of the bear, four heads of the leopard, and one head of the ten horned beast. Which one of those heads could be said to be wounded to death? Well, when Adolf Hitler brought down World War II on the world, uh, there were uh, people at the end of World War II that said, we can never allow Germany to disturb world peace again. They started the uh, Franco-German War of 1870. They started World War I. Then they started World War II. There must be something wrong in the German soul. So we have to ensure that this will not happen again. So they decided to cut Germany in half. They created East Germany and West Germany. They placed East Germany under the communist sphere of influence. They, cre they put West Germany under the uh, Western uh, dem democratic sphere of influence. Well, that worked because it reduced the population of both entities so low that they never would have the strength nor the financial wherewithal to plunge the world into uh, another world war. Well, that worked for a while. However, as time went on, there was a lot of people agitating that Germany should be allowed to reunite that if Germany were absorbed in the larger European Union, that uh, the world would be able to tolerate that because the world union would be so large that Germany would only be a small percentage of that European Union. Consequently, uh, one thing after another was written. Now, 1961, at that time, the communists were, uh, we were in the Cold War and they were guarding from the brain drain. People were escaping from East Germany into West Germany, especially the best minds, the doctors, the lawyers, and all of that. Uh, they didn't like living under the iron heel of communism. And so consequently, there was a huge brain drain happen. In order to stop that, uh, the Russians built a wall, a 29 mile wall, separating East Germany from West Germany. But well, when that happened, all of a sudden now we've got a wound down through the heart of civilization. So when we get back, we'll pick up from here and explain how all this ties together to fulfill the prophecy.